Hello, hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I'm going to have to sue Politico because I'm supposed to walk out to Beyonce music. That was not what just happened. So I will be talking to the producers right after. It was lovely to know you all. Um, for those that don't know, Jenna Miles Dillon <laughs> um, needs no introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mainstay in democratic politics for years, from Al Gore to John Edwards' presidential run, Obama's 08 campaign, deputy campaign manager in 2012 for Obama, managed Beto O'Rourke's 2020 campaign, and famously came in to run President Biden's 2020 election, went to the White House, <laughs> and then came back um, to the Biden and now Harris campaigns. Um, I want to get you on kind of some breaking this news that's happening <laughs> right now. Right at um, that time. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> With one of your, the third party candidates. Yeah. Um, RFK says that he has a, um, a speech on the path forward. And for many of us, and for you, you know what that means. Um, Nicole Shanahan, his VP pick, says, um, we might walk away right now and join forces with Donald Trump. We walk away from that and we explain to our base why we're making this decision. What's the reaction from the campaign about, one, him dropping out, and how do you think it's going to impact the race? Yeah, well, it's nice to be here with you guys. Um, we said we were a little gender reveal-y up did. here. We also agree that gender reveals are bad. Yeah, well, also <laughs> those are bad. Yeah, I agree with that, too. Um, look, uh, first of all, I will say at the top, we are very confident that the vice president is going to win, whether she's running against one candidate or multiple candidates. And at the same time, I think when you look at RFK and what's happened over the last several months, the more the American people hear from him, the more we see that they don't like him that much. And they think that what he's saying is more extreme. You saw his numbers peak several months ago. They've continued to drop. I think that's similar to what we're seeing with Donald Trump. And I think a lot of the base of the support that uh, exists across the board is going to stay. So I don't think it's going to really interfere with the race too much. I think we're going to continue to be focused on what we have to do. Uh, and we're going to be ready regardless. Do you think he pulled from former President Trump or you guys more? Well, look, I think it's actually been in, in flux, right? I think, first of all, the vice president carries the support of the Kennedy family, and uh, they have talked uh, about the legacy and uh, the importance of the values that their family has always stood for and is represented in our ticket and uh, in our party. I think, you know, when he came out of the gate, there was definitely a sense of, well, what kind of candidate is he? Yeah. We don't know much about him. I think the more and more you heard what he was saying out there, the more and more you saw uh, him uh, making connections uh, with with Trump and, and financed by a lot of uh, donors that are also financing the Trump campaign. I think you saw that uh, be more of a, a place where he was landing on the extreme side. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to move over to kind of almost a month ago today, I think, when President Biden tweeted out, tweeted out the news um, that he had moved on. I guess the, you know, he kept saying that eventually that one, that God Almighty was going to have to move him out of the t off the ticket. Um, but then also that if he was shown that he couldn't win, that he, if he made a determination that he couldn't win, that he was go going to knock it out. Did you, had you made that determination that President Biden couldn't win? No, I mean, look, I think you heard from the president last night. You heard this was a decision that he uh, felt like he had to make sure that we did everything possible to defeat Donald Trump. And that's been the mission since the day he got into the race. All of you have heard him talk about when he got in in 2019, it wasn't necessarily the path that he had imagined to begin with. Uh, and he really felt like it was critical for him to do that. But I think when you heard him last night, what you heard him um, in his letter and how he quickly went and endorsed Vice President yeah. Harris, so much of that was about making sure we did everything possible to put the country first. And President Biden's always done that. Yeah. There are folks within Biden world who are still a little upset, maybe, at people like Speaker Nancy Pelosi, your old boss Barack Obama, Chuck Schumer, um, for as folks have put it to us, unfairly treating and pushing out President Biden um, from the ticket. Are you among those folks? Are you, I, how are you feeling about those folks? You know what? Folks? I actually, I think this convention, which we were talking earlier, I don't tend to always come to conventions or always think that they really drive strategic imperatives of the campaign. But I think if you look at this convention, you see the greatness of this party and the leaders of our party from the Obamas last night, the Clintons, uh, President Biden, the First Lady. We just have such extraordinary leaders, and they are always putting the country first. And I think that's what President Biden did. And I think that's why not only getting out of the race, but then moving so quickly to support Vice President Harris. And then to say uh, music to my ears as a campaign person, to hear from the president say he's going to be the number one volunteer. We will take him up on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know, at its core, both the president and the vice president know what it takes to win. Yeah.
Yeah, what I guess what, uh, on President Biden being that number one volunteer, where do you think he's most useful? Where, you know, we, um, some of our colleagues wrote a story that kind of the Midwest, those, that blue wall area where he spent a lot of time already in Pennsylvania, you know, because we were always on the road <laughs> and almost there every weekend. Um, but is that kind of what you, where you guys are thinking of utilize, utilizing the president? Well, look, I, I think the president has been a president for all Americans. And so I think part of what you're going to see is him continue to do his, his day job as president. But I also think What's so unique about President Biden and Vice President Harris is how they connect with real people and the stories. It's not just about um, the legislation from an administration standpoint. It's about how it impacts people and being able to make those connections. So, of course, <laughs> we will see President Biden in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. but we will also see him making those connections and the vice president and Governor Walls, too. So we're just excited to have so many people that can be out there on the road for us. There's been, and you kind of nodded to it, this kind of huge surge of enthusiasm among Democratic voters, donors. Um, we're seeing that a lot here. You know, Lord John last night was probably <laughs> when it happened if President Biden was a nominee. Um, yeah, maybe, it, you maybe, know, never know. maybe. Um, what do you think it was about the switch from Biden to Harris that has kind of pulled in all of this energy and enthusiasm and excitement for the party? Well, I think, first of all, from what President Biden did to be able to really put his country first and how quickly he went to support the vice president. And then, you know, look, traditionally at this time in any election is when people start tuning in, people start paying more attention to this race uh, and having the opportunity to have the convention in the middle of this phase. I think it really uh, allowed us to be able to reach out to people. Big things happened. Uh, <laughs> and so people are paying more attention. And those folks that aren't like all the rest of us that are watching today, um, we're, we're tuning in a little bit more. And I think it also uh, gives us such an opportunity right now in this phase of the campaign to introduce the vice president and Governor Walls to the country. And I think people are interested in that. And I think that really has opened the doors to new people seeing themselves in what we're building together. Yeah, on the introing them, right, you have Vice President Harris is obviously tomorrow. You have Walls today. I'm sure he'll lean into his coach of it all. <laughs> um, but when you think about introducing Vice President Harris throughout this week and also moving forward, what are the top four things you feel like you guys are trying to get voters to understand about who she is? I keep hearing about her McDonald's stint. That feels like that's at the top of the yeah, list. Yeah, well, you know, I, I worked at Burger King for like one day and it didn't go very well for me, so. <laughs> you guys uh, duel about yeah. whether which one's better? <laughs> no, she, did, she was way better than I. <laughs> um, well, look, I, I actually think this is a pretty big part of the whole campaign. This phase right now, for us, we all know who the vice president is, but the American people don't. What they know they like, but they really don't know her that well. And they don't know her story. And sometimes when you are a sitting office holder, you don't always have the opportunity to be out there and tell people um, you know, the elements of your life that helps you as you're making decisions day in and day out. So we really think for the vice president and Governor Walls, who is amazing, um, but is not all that well known. This is really a great opportunity for us to really define the race in our terms, to be able to lay out who she is, who she's always been fighting for, what she's gotten done, whether she was a prosecutor or attorney general, the fact that she has come up as, as middle class, just like so many of us, her first uh, policy she put forth, really anchoring in the middle class and understanding that we need to do things to make lives easier for people and, and talking about things like housing. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, if you saw um, the vice president in North Carolina last Friday where she was talking about her mom and how she saved for a decade to be able to afford their first house and she was in high school and the pride she felt in that. So I think so much of what this opportunity we have right now is to not just say who she is and who she's been fighting for, but how those values and her life's work has led to this point and led her to um, be the partner she's been to the vice, the president and to, to be the kind of individual leader she's gonna be moving forward. You talked about uh, her speech in North Carolina. She did some economic policy there. She's talked about immigration a little bit. There's been kind of a question about when there's going to be a, a longer um, a rollout of, of policy. But I've been talking to some Democrats, and what, they're, what they've been telling me is maybe this is a vibes election. Maybe this isn't a policy paper election, <laughs> right? Like um, former President Trump isn't exactly known for his own love of, of the ins and outs of policy. Is this, are we going to see more policy or is this kind of a vibes election happening for us? Well, this will not surprise you <laughs> to say that I don't believe it's either or. Um, and look, I think, you know, we've been in this race for, for four weeks yeah. with the vice president at the top of the ticket. And the first thing she did was roll out uh, a policy on uh, key issues that 
are the things that the American people are focused on, how to bring down costs, how to think about things that they need in their lives, um, that they want to make sure that their elected officials understand. So I think that's a big piece of business, and we're going to continue to do that. At the same time, let's not forget what we're in contrast to, which is Donald Trump and the Project 2025. And you know, we might say he doesn't have a lot of policy, but the stuff that's been put out there, you know, um, national abortion ban, repealing ACA, uh, tariffs that are going to create tax heights on the middle class, those are policies. And they're policies that have real impact on people's lives. And I think you're going to continue to see us uh, really talk about that in contrast. And I think we'll have the ability to reach people that are not partisan or political. That's part of what you're seeing here, but also about things that really matter in their lives. How has the campaign had to orient its, reorient itself in that switch, right? You talked since four weeks, lots of changes that have to happen. Um, how are you, what changes for you guys, the top three categories, I guess, when you're thinking about, okay, we had President Biden, who has been around for 52 years, people know him, right? Um, and then Vice President Harris. How does that change what you guys do? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, we've had some big changes. <laughs> but fundamentally, an election is still a choice about the future. And I think that uh, what you have seen and what we've been building is just one. We have an extraordinary team of people. You know, almost 2,000 people all across the country uh, that really have never lost sight of what is at stake and what they're here to do, and and really that there is a clear choice. And so I think that as we continue to build, while we have a new leadership, of course, and and the vice president has been really stepped into this moment in an extraordinary way, Governor Walls and seeing them together, I think that authenticity is a big part of what people are responding to. Um, but I also think fundamentally, this is an election about the future, and our job as a campaign is to make sure that we don't lose sight of that, that we create as much space right now to define this race on our terms. And that's a different strategy than what we had before. President Biden is very well known, especially President Biden versus Donald Trump. We have an opportunity now, and you, you see some of the announcements from our campaign about uh, advertising dollars we're spending now, the work we're doing on the ground. That matters today as much as it's going to matter in October as people continue to pay attention and they see what's happening and they want to do more and get more involved. Yeah. And bringing those teams together, right? You've talked to our colleague Chris Catalago um, kind of about, I guess, growing pains, right? When, when you bring all of these hundreds and thousands of people together and, and as you add people to the campaign, you told him there's no doubt when you have 2,000 people and you're changing who's at the top of the ticket, that is going to take a minute to make sure that everyone's seated well and we still have more work to do on that. That was a a couple of weeks ago, yeah. how are people see it now? Well, I mean, look, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> We're doing all right, um, but we have a long way to go. And I think it, it is true. I mean, I'm not going to, anyone who has run a big organization that is going through a massive transition, it's going to take time to pull all those pieces together. But we have 76 days. And if I can deliver one message here today, it is that this is going to be an extremely close race. It is a margin of error race, and we have to do everything possible to make sure we capitalize at every moment. And the thing that has been so wonderful about all of this is that this campaign really does reflect the vice president and Governor Walls. We built a whole running mate team. Obviously, we didn't have one before and <laughs> right, we didn't right. need one, but our leadership from the top on to the bottom of this campaign, it is based on people coming together, people who have worked with the vice president forever, right, in all different roles, people that have worked for President Biden, people that have come off very competitive statewide Senate races, people that work for the Obamas and the Clintons. We have such an extraordinary amount of talent. And what has really come together and has been so wonderful is that they are all in it, not for themselves. Just like President Biden, just like Vice President Harris, it is to make sure that we win because too much is at stake. And everyone is plugging in and doing an extraordinary job. And I think when we look back on this, it's because the people that have been part of this really reflect the, pre the vice president's leadership, but also really reflect understanding what we're all here for. Yeah, you talked about this being a close race. Vice President Harris, first privately and then publicly, has been telling all of you that um, to run like the underdog, she's yeah. often talked about not losing to Donald Trump, but losing to the couch. Um, and not the J.D. Vance joke <laughs> couch. I was like, wait, I don't know. Where, where are I'm we going? I was like right there. I'm sorry. Um, what does running like the underdog actually look like for you guys? Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you brought this up because I do think we are the underdog. I mean, we're running against a former president. Uh, and so you can't take that for granted. But 
We feel very good about where we are in terms of what we're seeing in our own data and the polling, but even the best polling out there has this completely tied. And at the end of the day, you do not win unless you win 270 electoral votes. Our job is to make sure we never lose sight of that. And it means that you have to go out there and fight for every vote. And you have to make sure that the American people understand that they can see themselves in part of what we're building and in the vice president's vision. And as a campaign, our job is to make sure we're reflecting all that. I really do think that we have uh, consolidated our support across the coalition that helped elect President Biden and Vice President Harris in 2020. There are new voters that are available to us post Dobbs uh, that we saw in 22. Uh, but our responsibility now as a campaign is to continue to make sure that we're fighting every day for those votes and we're giving people a reason to stay engaged, to continue this momentum, to make this the floor instead of the ceiling. Um, as she's making that argument, as you guys are going out there, I'm going to get back to the policy for one second. Um, I've talked to some folks who worked for Al Gore when he was wow. the. <laughs> we're going in the way back. Going, oh, way back when he was um, running for vice, when he was running for president as vice president, and they talked to me about the 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 happy space of differentiating and like saying what you're going to do as Vice President Harris is going to have to do, but not distancing yourself from the guy that you have to go into the Oval Office with. So how's the campaign thinking about that and, yeah. and kind of towing that line? Well, I mean, look, I think, first of all, the vice president has been campaigning for the last year and leading on really key issues that the American people um, care most about. I mean, she's been the tip of the spear on reproductive freedom and traveling across the country on that. She uh, was uh, leading an, an economic, black economic tour across the country. And so, you know, what you're going to continue to see, I think, is in a, um, a partnership on values, on the things that brought the president and the vice president together to begin with, that brought uh, Governor Walls into the fold. And then, of course, you heard from the president. The vice president is going to put her own stamp on the future. And you saw that right out of the gate when she was giving her economic remarks. And I think that at the end of the day, um, you're going to continue to see her lead and do that exactly as we've been talking about, by talking about who she is, making sure people know uh, where um, the, the fight she's had in the past and who she's fighting for, how she wants to lead this country forward, but never losing sight of the fact that this is about the future, You're in contrast to Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> You're a nerd for this map stuff. Yes, I am. You should <laughs> see, take that as Thank a compliment. Thank you, I will. <laughs> um, so first, the, the folks we've spoken to on the campaign believe there are more pathways than there were when, when President Biden was at the top of the ticket. A lot of the focus seemed, you guys are still spending a lot of money in a lot of states, but that the three blue wall states was where you felt like that, that path was. Um, why does it feel like there are more pathways now? Well, first of all, we need 270 electoral votes. And for us as a campaign, having multiple pathways to 270 gives us the greatest chance of handling any fluctuations in the race. I don't know uh, if you noticed, we've had some fluctuations in the race, and that <laughs> has allowed us to really uh, capitalize on this moment, in part because we have operations in all of these battleground states. We have a structure on the ground of volunteers and offices. You know, you've, you've heard us from a campaign standpoint talk about this a lot. Uh, over 300 offices, um, you know, 1,500 staff on the ground in these states, and they are there to reach voters. Just this weekend alone, I love this so much to talk about nerd that I am. <laughs> Just this weekend alone, we reached a million people in battleground states through direct voter contact. A million people. That is a big deal. I would put a swear word in it, but I know that that is not appropriate in this venue. Yes, you we're all adults. Big deal. Big deal. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, be a better version of myself. <laughs> but I'm not. But for us, the the one electoral vote in Nebraska too is going to matter as much as what's happening in Georgia and what's happening in Nevada because we need to keep all those in play. And the wider our map is, the more Donald Trump has to play on that map. And our opportunity is kind of connecting to all the things we've been talking about. People are starting to pay attention because of the, the shift in this race and the opening up of a, a new candidate and a lot of excitement. People are plugging in. You're seeing strength for the vice president with key constituencies that have always been core to her, including Latino voters. And we feel very good about both the path for building our coalition, increasing turnout, increasing registration, but also reaching a lot of these swing votes. I mean, these are battleground states for a reason, and they're going to all be on the margin. They are going to be extremely close. And so what we're building allows us to capitalize on that. Yeah. What swing states are your best bet? Ignore them. It's just us talking. It's the <laughs> off the record. I won't Nobody's tell anybody. Here. But like, if, when you're looking at the map, right, yeah. 
Um, what are the states where you're like, this is, maybe we have to spend less money here because we kind of feel very good about this. Is it, is it Nevada? Is it um, Pennsylvania maybe? Wisconsin? Feel free to list all yes, of them yes. right you're here. You're never going to hear me say that, answer <laughs> this at all, uh, about spending less money. Uh, you know, look, I think you see and where we're spending resources. Yeah that our responsibility is to make sure we are leaving no stone unturned in any of these states. So when we look at Pennsylvania, we look at travel, we look at uh, advertising, we look at organizing, we look at different communities and we think about what kind of coalitions are there, we think about the electorate and we wanna make sure that we don't have just one thing we're doing we have all of that kind of built together. So there is no part, these are, this is a close race. We can't afford to take and look away from anything. And so for us, we need to make sure that we are doing everything possible so that we can win each one and we have multiple pathways. So we will continue to do that. And we also do see a lot of states that like Minnesota, pretty excited with our choice. Uh, and those are places that have traditionally been democratic states. We have always had organizations there to handle the flux of what's gonna happen in the race. Um, but we feel pretty confident that we're gonna continue to build on what we've already had and that our strategy there continues to be playing this as an underdog in a very close race. So you don't have like a favorite swing state? Oh my God, favorite. <laughs> How many, when, when you- so much trouble. Um, so Michigan, for example, yeah. one of the things um, that people have been talking about a lot, I've talked to the, um, some of the uncommitted folks who are here today. When you think about Gaza and the kind of, how young voters are feeling, how Arab Americans are feeling about the policy of the Biden-Harris administration, how are you thinking about how that's going to impact the vote in Michigan, for example? Yeah, I mean, look, obviously it is a very difficult uh, issue, and I think the vice president has been very clear that she's going to con continue to do everything in her power as vice president with President Biden to push for and do everything possible for a permanent ceasefire to bring home the hostages, continuing humanitarian aid, and also making sure that there is space for this conversation in our party. The great thing about what we are doing here is that you can be a never Trumper, you can be a Republican who has never been with us before, you can be a young person, you can be nonpartisan, you could be a coach of an Olympic team, and you have a home with us in our, in our party, which is often built just to talk to the people that have always been with us. That is not who the vice president is. That means, and you've heard her say this herself, you have to talk about issues, you have to make sure we don't, we, we have very difficult things we have to tackle, we have to keep uh, giving people an opportunity to have those conversations. That's in Michigan, that's everywhere. Yeah. You talked about the, the electorate that she has av kind of available to her. Um, I've been following her around for three and a half years. Um, we're all very exhausted. But she has focused a lot on black voters, brown voters, young voters. Um, when you guys think about how the electorate she has had and now has available that maybe President Biden didn't because folks were upset with him, who is that and where are those folks in, the, in these states? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I think that um, she has been very strong with what we call the Biden coalition, yeah. the people that made up the base of the vote in 2020. That is now the Harris Walls Coalition. And a lot of that looks similar, uh, where we are focused on ensuring that we're talking to young people, that we're talking to communities of color, we're talking to people that maybe are not that politically engaged. We're giving them a reason and a way to plug in. You know how hard it is to reach people. And that the way you communicate, this is very important, what we're doing uh -huh, here. Uh -huh. However, it does You can not... come whenever you want. Yeah, we'll right, have you at right. any live event you this want. This is a lot already. <laughs> this, this is good for me. Um, but there's a lot of people that aren't paying attention to this. So how do you reach young people? And I think for uh, certain, the vice president and Governor Walls, as they've been out there, we're going to continue as a campaign to find different platforms and way th ways that people can see themselves and get information about this campaign. At the same time, the vice president has been leading and talking about issues like reproductive freedom. And that is an issue that affects everyone, whether you're a woman or you're a man. It is not a woman issue. And it is from abortion to IVF to contraception. And I think that is a big part of how we think about an expanded audience of people. But don't forget. It is the Biden-Harris administration that is the most pro-labor party. Her strength with union voters, working class voters, Governor Walls, who comes from a small town and uh, is going to be out on the trail. I think that what you see in our ticket is really a balance of what you see in this country. And at the, its core, our country is looking for people that are going to put the people of this country ahead of 
politics. They're going to work for solutions. They're not going to be afraid to work across party lines. And the vice president has been leading on that um, from the beginning. So I think it's very exciting what we're building and the support that uh, she's continuing to grow. Yeah, you, you've talked about battleground voters. You, you call them re-engagement targets who are with you in 2020 but may not be as engaged now. Since Harris has taken over, have you seen a shift in this group? Did, did, the, did the change reignite voter enthusiasm among this kind of re-engagement targets that you have? In there is no doubt that the vice president and Governor Walls have tapped on, uh, tapped into energy in this country and in our party. Now, now, some of that, again, is sort of the structure of a race where you are at the phase of the campaign where you have a convention and you're moving to the fall and we're going to have uh, a debate, uh, hopefully if uh, Donald Trump uh, shows up, but we will be there. But those things are kind of seminal elements of a campaign where people tune in more and more. So we're going to see that. But at its core, I think from the vice president and Governor Walls, just seeing them on the campaign trail together and seeing the, the size of the rallies. I'm not here to tell you that the size of events make the difference on whether we will win or lose, but I am here to tell you that that is all genuine, what she is building and igniting with people in terms of their energy and wanting to learn more and wanting to show up, and we're seeing that grow. Last night, how awesome was last night? You don't have to say awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, it was awesome organizationally, but you know, you had 19,000 people in a stadium in a battleground state tuning in at the same time that we had the convention. And all the technology worked, which is honestly what I care about as much as anything else. Um, but those are voters, and they wanted to be part of this. And I think that that is when you capture a moment and an energy, and people want to, to join in part of that, we're going to continue to see that grow. And I think the vice president has really um, uh, just catapulted us to this next level and this next phase of the race. Yeah, I know you have to go. I'm getting text messages from Bowen <laughs> back there. Um, when you... You used to work for President Obama. He and the First Lady spoke yet last night. They're two of the most popular Democrats, I guess, on the planet. Um, obviously, you saw how people reacted to the things that they said last night. How are you guys going to utilize them in this campaign? Are they going to kind of be talking to donors, or are they going to get on the road a lot? Yeah, well, I mean, um, as I said, I'm not normally a convention person, but I couldn't help myself thinking over the last two days just how tremendous to be part of this and to to be uh, in a place where we have leaders like the Obamas. Uh, the second gentleman I thought was amazing uh, last night in telling a story about who the vice president is in ways that um, you know not everyone knows about. But I think no doubt, whether it's President Biden, the first lady, the President uh, Obama and Mrs. Obama, whether it is our principals, surrogates, uh, elected officials, what we are facing is people wanting to do more and more. And we're going to see people on the road, whether it's encouraging people to get registered, whether it's talking to um, grassroots events, whether it is finding ways to reach their own networks of people and pulling them in. I loved uh, Mrs. Obama's uh, speech last night where she was talking about how important it is to take action and to not need to be asked to just go do. You can talk to people in your own lives and not make a big coddled. difference. Maybe she had a target audience in mind. Well, I, I, I would not, I would not <laughs> add to that. I would just simply say, you know, for us to be successful because this is going to be so close, yeah. we need everyone. And we need everyone to be part of this and to feel like they can be part of this. And it doesn't, we will have the organization and the campaign to tap into this, but it doesn't take that for someone in your life to say, hey, go get registered, or did you hear about this, or make sure to tune in for five minutes about something that really lays out what's at stake in this election, and that is what we have uh, the benefit of for this week. Yeah, Lauren's going to kill me. I'm going to ask one more question. Yes. Um, what keeps you up at night? Um, well, my three kids well, uh, do. Other than the, uh, other that, than the physical that, humans okay, in yeah, the house. Right. Um, honestly, complacency, yeah. right? I, I, I certainly feel like, um, you know, you could kind of look at this moment and be so energized and be like, oh, we got it. Yeah. And we don't have it. We don't have it. This is going to be an extraordinarily close race. I cannot state that enough. How many times have I said it already? Quite a few, yeah. But <laughs> I know, hey, I'm on message. Oh, exactly. they, um, they train me well. But, but truthfully, seriously, these are, these are, we are a polarized nation in a challenging time. And despite all the things that are happening in this country, Donald Trump still has more support than he has had at any other point. It is our job as a campaign. It is our job working for the vice president to make sure the American people understand her vision. They understand what she's standing for. They understand that there is a real choice in this race. But it is going to come down to every single vote. I have been doing this for a very long time. And this is hard business, but this one is for all the marbles. And I want to make sure that everyone understands, no matter how good it feels right now, 
take that, bottle it, but we have to keep building for it because it's going to be that close, and that's what we're focused on. Jen O'Malley-Dillon, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you all. So much.